Hello, you're listening to the voice of David Pidgeon, the outgoing editor of MediaTel News. And in this session, I'll be taking a look at changes to the way news brands are measured. That's because last month, the industry agreed upon a new set of ABC reporting options, part of a clear pattern of change in the wider media measurement world, which pretty much like everything else in Adland is evolving. From ISBAR's Project Origin to UCOM's forthcoming Project IRIS, there are some big changes heading our way in media measurement. And ABC, founded in 1931, certainly cannot sit still either as the needs of the market change. What are those changes? Well, for the first time in 33 years, the ABC has ceased issuing monthly news brand reports, will allow for additional metrics to be reported, and will also allow publishers to hide their ABC certificates from public view. That's quite a big deal in many ways. So I asked the ABC's chief executive, Simon Redlich, to provide some finer details on those changes, but also to explain why they were made. Here's what he had to say. The common theme in all changes we make is responding to the needs of our members and the industry. This has been exemplified by a raft of changes made in response to the COVID pandemic. The recent changes to the reporting of data for national newspapers are no different. It's another example of ABC responding to concerns raised by the industry. In this case, that the monthly release of circulation data can provide a stimulus for a narrative about news brands that doesn't reflect the full breadth of those brands across different platforms. Print is a very important part of the mix, but it's not all they do. The same is very much true for ABC. So the question for us was how to address these strongly held concerns whilst maintaining the flow of data that supports the buying of advertising. In the current environment, buying that space needs to be as straightforward as possible. Our answer has been a three-point plan for data reporting. Firstly, we've stopped publishing the monthly news brands report. Instead, certificates are released on a rolling basis as soon as they're ready. This reduces that stimulus for stories focusing solely on one aspect of brand performance. But reports can still be generated from our data hub at any point in time. Secondly, we introduced the private reporting option for nationals. This allows publishers to manage the dissemination of their data, whilst avoiding the fragmentation and inconsistency that would inevitably come from people not reporting to a common industry standard. Importantly, within this, we provided the means to maintain the flow of data for commercial discussions with a minimum of disruption. Our standards and the auditing of data are completely unchanged. The sole difference here, which is entirely optional, is how the publisher chooses to share that data. Last but not least, we now have a mandatory plus optional approach to data reporting in all sectors. This maintains the direct comparability of the core mandatory data, but enables optional data to be reported in addition, as long as it's to agreed industry standards and definitions. This gives publishers an opportunity to support the sales narrative that fits their strategy. This is all very new, but I do believe it navigates a route that takes account of views on all sides, enabling news brands to manage their narrative whilst minimising any impact on trading. That was Simon Redlich at the ABC. So the idea then is to create a balance in how national newspapers tell their story of growth to the market while ensuring agencies and advertisers have access to trusted circulation data. In short, the change is to help news publishers shift away from that pesky narrative of decline one sees if they pay too much attention to just print, but forget all about the other ways in which news content is now delivered. I asked Belinda Beftink, uh, the IPA research director, to explain why this was such a problem and how trying to resolve it has caused something of an industry-wide headache. The ABC has, has changed really in response to how the national newspapers want to tell their story. Um, And it's really come about because over the last few years, there's been this tension between the circulation, print circulation figures that are published by ABC and the narrative that's picked up by the wider press, ironically, she says. Um, And you know, the fact that they are building digital audiences, which is not reported. So I think there's been a wealth of sort of feeling from the news brands in particular, 
but this was really putting them at a disadvantage and that we had to have a look at how the data is presented and how it's made available to try and redress that so that it doesn't become a story of continual decline. Um, and I think what what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, uh, you know, it isn't a simple problem to solve. And I think that what it means for ABC is that they've had to ask agencies to sign an NDA if they want to get numbers privately from news brands. And this just puts an extra layer of bureaucracy in the way of getting data which is not never a good thing, never a good thing. Um, and I think really it's it's a bit of a sticking plaster, if I, if I can say that. Um, and I don't think in the long term it's really going to succeed because I don't know where we get to then when we look at how um, news brands specifically are traded um, and we come to early next year and a lot of those trading conversations are based on share. Now, if those numbers are not shared, how, how does that trading happen? I'm not a trader. I can't answer that. But I think, you know, there is a bit of a sticking plaster going on here and I'm not sure it has a long term future. Um, will it be enough to stop? the negative reporting that there is around news brands and in, in terms of their monthly figures, we'll have to see. We'll really have to see. So what's starting to happen is a fragmentation, I suppose, of the news brand market. At the start of the year, The Telegraph pulled out of ABC reporting altogether. Well, immediately after the ABC announced its changes last month, News UK said it was no longer going to feature on the ABC data hub but the privately audited figures will continue to be available to all publishers and agencies who sign up to the ABC's new confidentiality agreement. In its place at News UK will be PAMCO, which gives multi-platform readership and true brand reach. For the publisher of The Sun, The Times and The Sunday Times, this will become the primary measurement currency. So what's the difference between the two? Well, currently the census base ABC audits print and online circulation figures and is largely used for trading. Meanwhile, PAMCO, which replaced the National Readership Survey in 2018, is audience-based and delivers the multi-channel readership of around 130 news and magazine brands. It is used much more widely in the planning process at media agencies. For various reasons, no other media uses two different so-called currencies, but published media requires them currently um, to effectively audit, plan and trade against a set of agreed and trusted standards. And similar systems do operate in other markets around the world. But what you might now be sensing is that the market is dealing with extraordinary complexity. So will the changes that the ABC has now made help? Well, here's Belinda Befting at the IPA again. I think agencies' response to it is um, it's irritation in a way that there's continual sort of change in how the data is reported. And it just gets in the way of them being able to sell the media, the benefits of the media onto their clients, the advertisers. Um, so so anything that has that impact is, is just ridiculous. It's an irritation um, and it shouldn't really need to happen, I think. So I think there's a kind of frustration that there's there's now this kind of extra layer, if you like, of of bureaucracy. Um, and it I think some people feel more strongly than others, of course, that's always the case. But I think that, uh, you know, there's a question about the role that ABC has. Um, and when you think about agencies and, and the position that most agencies are in, clients are increasingly demanding transparency and any attempt to hide or bury data would be held in very low regard. Um, and that then potentially puts budget at risk. So, you know, this one of the aspects of, of this change for ABC is this uh, position now that you can have public and private data. So the, the media owners can decide whether whether or not to publish their circulation figures. Um, and there's quite strong feeling from the agencies that this is it's just not helpful. 
And I don't know how we continue to trade as we have with this kind of dichotomy. So what about the publishers? To understand the top level view, I spoke with Tracy de Groos, the executive chair of Newsworks, which is the marketing body for national news brands. She explained what publishers want of a measurement system. The, the recent ABC changes have obviously come in consultation with the ABC board, which is made up of all the key stakeholders, including the publishers. And from a publisher perspective, for some time, we have been looking for a measurement system that reflects the, um, the changes that we're seeing across our industry. And obviously, news now is a multi-platform business. More readership comes from digital platforms than it does from printed form. And we innovate a lot in how news reaches different audiences, and we're seeing huge growth in that. Um, to have one part of our uh, industry measured by a different system and another part you know, across the industry measured differently, two systems has created unnecessary complexity, I think, and competition at times between the two, trying to justify their own existence. Now, the jigs are run by the stakeholders. So obviously we have a say and an influence on ABC as well as we do on PAMCO. I think the changes with ABC have come in recognition of how does circulation data fit into total audience data to total readership data because the circulation data only tells a part of the story and looked at in isolation can be at times difficult and challenging Uh, and so we want to make sure everybody always gets the the full picture and I think allowing publishers the right to sort of see how the, the the data is used by different parts of the industry allow some publishers, if they want to do that, the the ability to tell the full story, which includes readership data as well as circulation data. So I think the point is about flexibility and fluidity to tell one total story of, of how this industry is seeing readership. So what's at stake then if things aren't fixed? I think fixing measurement at this moment in time is important because we're going through uh, as an industry some massive challenges around trust, around the erosion of value in our industry um, and around homogenization and confusion and complexity that hides a multitude of sins. And I think, you know, certainly in terms of trust, we have to make sure we um, address the sort of concerns of many advertisers. If you look at PAMCO, um, they measure trust data. And I think trust is a currency that's going to become more and more important to more advertisers. And we can give them aggregated and individual data across the publishers. And I think that's really important. Um, But also, I think, you know, we want to invest to make sure we are accountable Um, We know that we're hitting real people. We know that we're giving a full picture. We want to be transparent with that. But I think measurement and accountability brings certainty certainty in a world that's lacking it in so many places. And so I think every part of our industry now needs to prove, uh, you know, prove uh, its value. So what is certain in all of this is that the changes the publisher market is seeing are far from over. I asked DeGroos, what was the appetite for further change? So, I mean, thinking about from a publisher perspective, where do we think um, the future for measurement is? We're hearing increasingly from the industry and from advertisers in particular a, a, the appetite is around audience data, it is around digital data and greater granularity and regularity of reporting around digital. I think they'd love to see more stats and more information on engagement. They would love to see a more understanding of how uh, some of our KPIs drive outcomes uh, and drives ultimately ROI. Um, and I think those are all the areas we want to see more innovation in, more regular data. You know, when you have 25 million digital 
daily news readers. There's a lot of depth we can provide in that that we're not currently. So those are big areas for us in the future we'd like to invest behind. And there we have it. Plenty in there to think about and probably challenge and debate too. And coming up next today, we'll hear from other industry stakeholders and what they think of these challenges and much more besides. Thanks for listening. I'm David Pigeon, the editor of MediaTel News. If you have any questions or you want to make a point about anything that's been raised in this session, then please use the hashtag and we're on Twitter all day long. Cheers.